Good evening. This is David Unsworth, host of the Pan Am Post English Podcast. On October 31st, 29-year-old Saifulo Saipov rented a truck in Lower Manhattan and drove onto a bike path along the Hudson River. He killed eight people and injured more than a dozen before being shot by police in the stomach and hospitalized. Saipov, a native of Uzbekistan, has pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. He entered the country on a so-called diversity visa program, which prioritizes visas and green cards for nationals of countries that historically send few immigrants to the United States. Trump has quickly called to end the diversity visa program. Is he politicizing the tragedy? Is the diversity visa program to blame? What are the major problems with the diversity visa program? And what should be our overall immigration strategy as a nation? <clears throat> so the we have gotten information now about who these eight victims were, and um, uh, most of them were not Americans. There were two Americans, both uh, males, I believe in their uh, late 20s, early 30s. There was one Belgian national, five Argentine nationals, uh, who were actually celebrating their 30th anniversary of their graduation from high school. They were from uh, a city called Rosario, which is about uh, oh, 300 miles northwest of Buenos Aires. So what is the diversity visa program? Uh, it's not exactly a household uh, uh, term. It's not something even for people that follow American politics closely. I'd never heard of it. I don't, I don't think many people had. And the reason we hadn't heard of it is because we're talking about very small numbers here. It is a program that has been in place since 1990, uh, and it is designed to provide a path to a visa and or green card for uh, citizens of countries that are traditionally and historically underrepresented in the United States. Uh, it's an extremely, extremely competitive program. Uh, it, for example, uh, in 2015, 9 million people applied for 50,000 slots. So, uh, put in other terms, there were 180 applicants for every one slot. Uh, it's been cited as a, a way to promote the American dream, to create goodwill and good publicity. Um, it has traditionally, especially in the last 10 years, it, it has benefited um, Sub-Saharan Africa, Central Asia, Eastern Europe. Um, only, and here the, here's the, the catch to it as well. Only nations that have sent less than 50,000 people to the United States in the past five years can apply. So if you look at a map here... Um, you'll see which countries are eligible for the program and which are not. Uh, this policy eliminates many of the world's most populous nations, such as India, China, Pakistan, and Brazil, and also others that are with close uh, economic and geographic ties with the United States that send a lot of immigrants to the United States, Mexico, Canada, Colombia, and Peru, for example. Now, what is the greatest argument against something such as the diversity visa program. Well, I uh, at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas, the world's largest uh, libertarian uh, convention or gathering, uh, I interviewed a immigration policy expert named Helen Raleigh, and she's written a recent book about immigration policy, and it, a, a lot of her uh, her research focuses on the Canadian immigration system, which is uh, almost entirely a meritocracy. So, this appears to be anything but a meritocracy. Um, other than endorsing the dictates of political correctness, I don't uh, exactly see why it is in our national interest to have a program to bring people to the United States simply because there aren't many Na uh, foreign nationals from those countries living in the United States. I mean, if we're talking about uh, uh, countries in the steppes of Central Asia or in remote South Pacific islands or in Sub-Saharan Africa, I don't exactly see how that benefits the United States. And I'm sorry, but uh, I am not a nationalist and I'm not anti-immigration, but 
the purpose of our immigration policy should be to benefit the United States. It's not to benefit the rest of the world. I mean, that's that's preposterous. I mean, that that is this politically correct nonsense that the Democratic Party wants to ram down our throats. Fundamentally, we want immigrants here because of what they're going to contribute to our economy. They should be coming here, and immigration should be tied to a job or to investment. Immigrants who are going to come here and work and fill positions that Americans cannot fill, or immigrants that are going to come here, invest in the country, and create jobs for others. That being said, this uh, policy still represents a very small percentage of our annual immigration. In fact, it accounts for around 4% of the green cards issued in a typical calendar year. Uh, we're talking about 50,000 slots here. So that's uh, clearly that, that is not very, very much in a nation of 320 million people. And again, uh, the Democrats, when Trump says we're, we're going to get rid of this diversity uh, visa program, the Demo Democrats are going to counter, well, we shouldn't make our public policy based only on headlines uh, Chris Murphy sent out a tweet that's been retweeted a hundred thousand times or something saying, uh, now I get it, uh, well, I'm paraphrasing here, but basically now I get it, uh, an American citizen, uh, commits a terror act and we can't do anything about it, but an immigrant commits it and we have to make our public policy on that. In general, I, I agree with Chris Murphy on this point. Our public policy should be data driven. It shouldn't be based on sensational headlines event X happened, so we need to do Y. Uh, nonetheless, if we want a merit-based immigration policy, and it doesn't matter how many slots, it doesn't matter if it's 50,000 or 500,000, isn't this rather counterproductive? I mean, on what moral, legal, or ethical grounds are we going to say, what, for example, oh, we don't have many people from Uzbekistan in the United States, so uh, we are going to prioritize people coming from Uzbekistan. I mean, this guy, Saipov, there was absolutely no legitimate reason for him to be here. What, we don't have enough truck drivers in the United States? He was an Uber driver, and he was a truck driver. So I'm, I'm a bit incredulous as to why it was so necessary to bring him into this country merely because he was from Afghanistan. I I simply don't understand it. And in fact, uh, Uzbekistan has done remarkably well uh, over the past few years, which raises the question of just how much of a lottery is it really? I mean, are we really uh, just randomizing this and saying, oh, you're, you're underrepresented, so we're going to bring you in? How, for example, in, in the calendar year 2012, out of these 50,000 sl slots available, Uzbeks won... 4,800 of those slots. If this is random and if it's really a lottery, how on earth uh, is a r r small nation in Central Asia getting nearly 10% of the slots? Uh, in the year 2016, they won uh, 2,378 of those slots. So, to move to the more general theme of immigration, uh, I am a frequent critic of the Democratic Party and political correctness. And here's the problem, though, the way I see it. To politically correct liberals, a great solution to problems in other regions of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, South, South Asia, Central Asia, is opening the floodgates to massive immigration from these countries into the United States. Well, that is great for uh, the lucky few who can do that, uh, obviously, your standard of living is going to skyrocket if you uh, immigrate from Honduras or Pakistan or Uzbekistan or uh, Romania to the United States. But how practical a solution is this? I think really global leaders should be focused on turning other countries into the United States. And I don't mean uh, literally turning them into the United States. Why is the United States so successful? Well, it's the political and economic and social model that we have. Democracy and capitalism, and uh, we have religious tolerance, we have 
the general idea that you can live your life here. Uh, you can start a business, you can raise a family, you can succeed. Uh, <clears throat> and limited government has been a part of that. And you can live free from corruption, you can li live free from extortion. We have a uh, top-notch judicial system, we have a top-notch police uh, system in place to enforce laws against fraud and so forth. But obviously, in many places in the world, like those countries I just mentioned, Honduras, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, or, or even countries in Eastern Europe, they don't enjoy that. They don't enjoy those same freedoms. They don't enjoy those same social and economic and political freedoms. So it's perfectly understandable why they would want to come to the United States. But really, just importing people from these areas by the hundreds of thousands or by the millions is rather impractical. In a certain sense, it's counterproductive. I mean, it does little good to move one, a bunch of people from one country to another. What we really should be focusing on is turning Honduras and Pakistan and Uzbekistan and Romania into something that more resembles the United States. Uh, where, wherever democracy and capitalism have gone, stability and prosperity has flourished. I mean, that, that is just the bottom line. That, that may not sit well with uh, some left-wing Democrats, but it is the absolute truth. And on a cultural note here, diversity in and of itself, just as some arbitrary co construct, is a completely foolhardy goal. It would be uh, like, for example, if the Algerian government was to get together there and say, well, we don't have an, enough diversity here. We, uh, let's create a special program to diversify Algeria. Why don't we, for example, say, uh, bring uh, 10,000 Eskimos, uh, or Aleutian Islanders, if you will, the more politically correct term, Let, let's bring 10,000 Aleutian Islanders to live here in the Sahara Desert. Well, great, you're, you're now a more diverse country. Is that better for Algeria? Is that better for Aleutian Islanders? You're more diverse. Uh, or what if the uh, Nepalese government gets together and says, you know, we're, we're not a, a diverse enough country. What we really need, uh, let's get some color here. Let's bring in uh, some immigrants from uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo or Zimbabwe. Let's bring in some uh, immigrants from so uh, Central and South America uh, or from Southeast Asia. We really need to diversify here. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, just saying that we have a policy of diversity here because we want to feel good about ourselves and we want to appear to be diverse, uh, that does not seem to be the best way to make public policy, whether or not we're talking about 50,000 immigration slots a year, 5 million immigration slots a year. Uh, call me crazy, but just because you are from a country that does not have many immigrants in the United States, I don't think that you should get any special treatment in immigration proceedings. That appears to be exactly the opposite of what we want to be doing. Immigration should be a meritocracy, period. You should be given access to the U.S. and its lucrative job market based on the contributions you can make for the economy, not based on reasons of political correctness. So, ultimately, is Donald Trump right? Is the diversity visa program to blame for this terrorist attack? Well, he's not necessarily entirely right. He's also not entirely wrong. If the, the diversity visa program was not in place, uh, Saifulo Saipov never would have been able to come here. Uh, there's, there's no reason that uh, someone with well, a basic education who comes here to be a truck driver and an Uber driver, there's no reason that he's an, an essential uh, individual to bring into the United States. I say let's bring in the STEM people, the science, uh, technology, engineering, mathematics people, and wherever they're from. It shouldn't be based on your skin color, your religion, your nationality, any, your age, anything else. We need the best qualified people in here. And, and that, you know, particularly when it comes to things like engineering and computer science and so forth, we, we are bringing in a lot of people from, uh, from India and China. That's, that's just a fact. 
uh, and there's absolutely no problem with it. But at the end of the day, the diversity visa program is is drops in the bucket, right? This is not this is not a huge program. This is not its existence or or removal is not going to make or break our nation, our economy, or our immigration policy. But nonetheless, in my mind, it's just another example of how th these these misguided concepts of political correctness can really do some damage here. Let's make our immigration policy a meritocracy, not about checking off some diversity boxes and filling some politically correct quotas and trying to make the United States some perfect microcosm where everyone from all of the world's 190 odd nations is represented. That, that, that benefits no one other than making a bunch of liberals feel good about themselves. This has been David Unsworth with the Pan Am Post podcast. Thanks for listening and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.